Welcome to Sliver and Bite TV. Today we're making vanilla batter. This recipe is perfect for cupcakes, number cakes, and layer cakes. We will start by cracking eggs into the mixing bowl. We will then let them rise to room temperature, roughly 21 degrees Celsius. We ensure that all of our ingredients are at room temperature. This allows all the ingredients to incorporate a little easier and even cook in. In a stand mixer, incorporate the eggs for roughly one to one and a half minutes. Now we can start on the rest of our wet ingredients. In a medium saucepan, you will pour in your milk and your butter. And on the lowest heat possible, you will melt the butter and then turn off the heat. We don't want to bring this to a simmer, so as soon as you see steam, turn off the heat. Once your one to one and a half minutes is up, pour in a quarter of the sugar and on a low speed, just incorporate the sugar and the egg mixture. Make sure you don't forget about the milk and the butter because we don't want to overheat this because at a later stage, we will be incorporating this into the egg mixture and we don't want to cook our eggs. Now that the first lot of sugar is incorporated into the eggs, you can pour in the rest. The reason why we do it in two batches is not to overwhelm the egg mixture and deflate our eggs. Incorporate this second lot of sugar on a low speed, then you can speed it up to full speed for seven minutes. I'm pausing just for a moment here and pulling off the whisk and making sure that all of the sugar is off the bottom of the mixing bowl. The worst thing is getting seven minutes in and having to incorporate the last little bit that is stuck to the bottom of the mixing bowl. I'm going to insert a little split screen here because while you're whisking the egg and the sugar, you'll be making sure that you are mixing the milk and the butter and turning it off once you see steam. And whilst that's happening, I'm also preparing the cupcake tray with the patty pans. Now that you've turned off the heat to your milk and butter, you are going to add in your vegetable oil and your vanilla extract. You can also use vanilla bean pods or vanilla essence and then mix that well, make sure it's incorporated. Pouring in the baking powder into the flour. and adding in some salt. And just rearranging the workstation, I can get rid of the induction cooktop 
and then mix together the flour baking powder and the salt. And getting ready for once the batter is ready to pour that into a jug that then I will pour into a squeeze bottle. By all means you can go straight from the mixing bowl into the squeeze bottle however sometimes it can get a little messy. Now that you have whisked for seven minutes, you can start spooning in the flour mixture. To begin with, only add in four to five tablespoons so you don't deflate and overwhelm the mixture. And ensure the amount that you have put in is fully incorporated before you add any more. you'll notice that the mixture is getting quite thick now. I'm turning off the mixture just to put in the last four to five tablespoons in one hit. I'm also just wiping down the sides just to make sure that we're fully incorporated. Once that's fully incorporated, you will grab your whisk and you will just dunk it into the mixture and pull out two to three tablespoons and mix that through the butter and milk mixture just to cool that down a little bit more.
and you'll make sure that that's fully incorporated because you don't want to have any clumps going in. and the mixer goes back on to a low speed. Make sure you have a spatula handy just to wipe the lip off of the saucepan so you don't have any drips. And you'll be adding in roughly a third of a cup each time. And once it's fully incorporated, you can add in another third of a cup. Towards the end, you can add in a little bit more. Again, we just start off slowly, not to overwhelm the mixture. Adding in the last of the milk and butter mixture. And we'll keep this on a low speed the whole time because we don't want to over mix the mixture. Taking the whisk off and giving it one last scrape along the bottom just to make sure that there is absolutely nothing left at the bottom of the mixing bowl.
And now that that's fully incorporated, I give the whisk a tap just to make sure that all of the batter is dripping off of that. Setting the whisk to the side and then getting ready to pour from the mixing bowl into your large jug. You'll see that I'm taking my time making sure I've got every last little drop out of the mixing bowl because it is the worst feeling and it's so frustrating when you get to the end of pouring out all of your cupcakes into the patty pans and you're missing 10 or 5 grams. So make sure you get absolutely everything you can out of the mixing bowl. And off screen, I am filling the mixing bowl and the whisk because also when you go to clean up, the last thing you want to do is have to wait there for it to soak because all of the residual batter has dried onto the mixing equipment. And now carefully decant your batter from the jug into your squeeze bottle or you can have your cake tins prepared, ready to buy out your mixture. As always, you can look at the description below to have a look at my Amazon links. That particular decor squeeze bottle is the best. I have tried several and some of them are just too stiff and too small. That one is absolutely perfect for cupcakes. You can see that I'm wearing gloves in this, so I am actually preparing these cupcakes for uh, an order. So you'll see that I'm weighing out the mixture. I'm putting 52 grams of batter into each patty pan. That also allows for even cooking and also in the cupcake box, you'll see that everything is evenly level to the eye. There's nothing worse than having cupcakes up and down because you've got 52 grams in one patty pan and 55 or 60, or it's ruined the cupcake because it's muffin topped over. So we want a nice beveled edge. That's why I always weigh my mixture out. As you can see, I've overfilled one of the patty pans. So I'm actually just dipping in my spatula to remove some of it. to speed this up for you so you don't need to sit through the rest of the fill. and also speeding up my second tray, otherwise we'll be here all day. And then that's off into the oven for 20 minutes or when the skewer comes out clean. 
and that's sitting at 160 degrees Celsius. Enjoying Sliver and Bite TV? Check out the rest of the recipes available right here on YouTube. See you soon.